I am definitely here at Universal Orlando and they've had a new rule where face coverings are not required anywhere in the park if you've been fully vaccinated, which I am. Uh, beforehand, it was face coverings were required throughout the park, everywhere, and they changed it to they're not required outside. And now, they've just recently changed it to they're not required anywhere as long as you're fully vaccinated, which everybody should be. But yeah, let's check out what the new rule is like. Slowly making our way to Islands of Adventure. We're starting off with Velocicoaster. I would say roughly 85% of the people are not wearing masks, which is okay, as long as you're fully vaccinated. Uh, but 50% are still wearing masks, and that's also okay. Definitely if you feel uncomfortable or if you've just gotten used to it. Uh, up until yesterday, Chris and I were wearing masks everywhere. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's about two hours after park opening here at Islands of Adventure. The other side, Universal Studios, opened at 7 a.m. for early admission. And it looks like there's not a large line to get in. So that's cool. So it's interesting, the park maps currently show the Jason Bourne stunt spectacular on the front. But I imagine when Velocicoaster opens in just like a week, week and a half, these are gonna change to show off Velocicoaster. By the way, I kind of think it's faster going left to Velocicoaster versus right. Because if you go right, you have to go through Hogsmeade and that can get very crowded. So I'm going left. And there's the Incredible Hulk Coaster. Skull Island's already a 60 minute wait. Wow, definitely not waiting in line for that. You definitely get a lot more of Jurassic Park when you walk on the left side to Velocicoaster. And that's nice, it gets you kind of in the mood for Velocicoaster. Versus if you go the other way, you kind of just got out of Hogsmeade and you're like, why am I riding a coaster about Velociraptors? Finally made our way to the entrance of Velocicoaster. Looks kind of busy. Let's see what the wait time is. By the way, at the entrance, they have two Velociraptors guarding it, welcoming you almost to your doom. And here's what the entrance looks like. Two more Velociraptors up there. And look at that, the coaster's right next to the entrance. Screams of joy. There is a single rider queue. It is at capacity right now. So they do limit the amount of single riders in it. And eventually it looks like there will be an express lane in between the single rider and the attraction entrance. It's a 75 minute wait right now, so we're gonna go wait on it. So the queue is definitely long. It takes you way out here. But that's kind of cool because I've never been out here before. I've been on the coaster twice, but never have I been here when the queue extended this far, which is cool because look at the views of the coaster you can get. So it looks like the single rider queue is back open. However, I'm already, you know, in the line a good 20, 25 minutes in, so I'm just gonna wait here and ask for the front row. As a single rider, you're not allowed to ask for any particular row. Also, once you're in this building, there are some giant fans to keep you cool, as well as some cool art. Let me zoom in. So you can't tell it now, but this is a lighting package, and it changes colors throughout the queue as time progresses. But just look at these statues here. These are absolutely amazing. Looks like they're made out of some sort of metal maybe, or made to at least look like that. And there's the coaster there. <laughs> just absolutely incredible. With real live raptors. The name Velociraptor means swift thief. For your sake. They do have water fountains in the queue, which is pretty nice. They have a couple of them throughout them, the queue. So that's one of the launches back there. And basically they have raptors chasing the coaster. How cool is that? State-of-the-art safety precautions. You are about to come face to face with these magnificent creatures in a way that you might have to go back in time millions of years to experience. 
Of course, guest safety is our paramount concern. In the grooming stations, each specimen undergoes a complex, comprehensive examination after every running cycle. Every aspect of the animal's physical condition, ophthalmological, dental, respiratory, and cardiovascular, is kept under close and constant monitoring. Our internationally recognized team of more than 40 specialized veterinarians, as well as our elite team of over 25 all right, we're in the raptor pen. Just look how real they look. By the way, these lockers are amazing. They're double-sided, so they actually open on either side. So yeah, in their exit of the ride, you can actually get your belongings. It's a two-way locker system, so it's kind of interesting. There is an on-ride picture. If you want to check it out, you check it out right outside the queue. I'm never good at taking pictures, so moving on. This is my first video reaction of Lost Coaster. I've done it twice before previous to this, but it's an absolutely amazing ride. Probably the second best coaster I've ever been on behind Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance is just absolutely incredible, but this is pretty dang amazing too. So this is definitely my second favorite coaster in the whole world. It's just absolutely amazing. It's nothing but, you know, maximum speed throughout the whole coaster. Okay, it just opened. I waited outside for 10 minutes. Started waiting at 11. I think it's about 11.10 now. This is the single rider queue. All right, I just got out of single rider. I did the ride, it was pretty fun, again. Uh, single rider was a 30 minute total time to me waiting uh, in front of the ride because it is at capacity uh, to getting off the ride and getting my stuff out of the locker. So probably about 26 minutes until I could get on the ride itself. So single rider definitely saved some time. Uh, the queue said 45 minutes for the regular line. When I got out, it said 60 minutes. So I think the max wait time for single rider is going to be about 30 minutes once it hits that capacity mark. Uh, so keep that in mind. Definitely feels interesting to be back at theme parks now without masks being required. Seems like a lot of people are taking advantage of that. And I do hope they're vaccinated. However, they are still taking precautions as cast members. As you can see over here, this character meet and greet is socially distanced. And so far, all the cast members, from what I've seen, are still required to wear masks. From what I can see, the crowds here are crazy for the day. The line for all kinds of food shops are so long. I think everybody is flocking to Universal because of the new rule and hopefully because they're vaccinated. I really do hope most of these people walking around masks are vaccinated. Universal Studio side of the park here. I'm gonna check out the Tribute Store, which is pretty unique. They have it set up for something very special. Let me show you. I still see some people with masks on, which is perfectly fine, and many more without masks on. The food lines are definitely long. Spickable Me Minion Mayhem is 70 minutes. Let's see how they do in the queue. So here's what the queue looks like. Doesn't really look like anybody's social distancing for the most part. Lots of people without masks, but I mean, as long as you're vaccinated, I think that should be fine. But I just want to let you know what's happening in the queue. Same thing with the queue for Shrek. It looks like people have gone back to their usual distancing for queue lines here on the rides. You know, some people distance well, some people scooch up to your back a little bit more. But uh, overall, Seems like things are getting back to normal. In case you haven't guessed by now, we're heading over to the tribute store because it's pretty amazing right now. We went last night, uh, didn't film it, just experienced it, but I gotta show it to you guys. Slowly on my way to the tribute store. 
first time I went there last night, and it was pretty amazing. As we round the corner, you'll be able to see it in a second. There it is. They have themed the tribute store to Jurassic World. You got the big gates there that are the signature pillar of Jurassic Park franchise. Let's go inside. Here we go. We have some in-gen decoration here. Control room to the left. Velocicoaster. And it's nice and cool in here. This is a great place to cool down. They have a ton of Velocicoaster merchandise. Even got socks if you're into socks themed as Velocicoaster. They got like a miniature control room here where you can design phones technically. It's kind of cool. Got some more shirt designs over here to Jurassic World. They even got a mold of a T-Rex. So you can make this right here. It'll basically inject plastic in here. It's a T-Rex mold and then it'll plop out here. Looks like it's six dollars. Looks like they got another control room here. And this is actually an Easter egg back to the first Jurassic Park movie. They had this on one of the desks. Uh, I forget his name. But yeah, it is a throwback to Jurassic Park, the first movie. And it looks like the Magic Candle Company has their candles here. Hadrosaur Cove. They also have a churro flavor as well. We're entering a new room, and this is the Velociraptor pen. There's Velociraptors all around us. Look at that. It looks so real. Oh my gosh. And they have more merchandise here. Basically, each one of these rooms is its own merchandise store. And this is a pretty cool long sleeve. I'm digging that style. I like that these, they made it feel like you're basically in a Velociraptor pen. I mean, even the display case is like that thing, you know, that the Velociraptors like put in, in the first movie. I don't know what it's called. They even got like the door up there that slides up and down. This is just so well detailed. They have a Triceratops trail candle. Some other candles include Stegosaurus, Eastock right there. And they even have some cool signs right here. Mountain T-Rex encounter and Raptor chaser. We're leaving the Raptor paddock and we're going to the visitor center. The music has changed. I don't know if you can hear that. But it feels like we're visiting the visitor center after it was already taken over by the dinosaurs. Wow, look at this. Oh, the lights even flicker. Oh, I love it. Got some like retro merch here. I love it. Oh, lightning. This place is so well decorated. It's absolutely amazing. They even have one of these like egg incubators that they have here. Oh, screen use Velociraptor eggs. Wow, that's kind of cool. But just look at the attention to detail, the detail in this. Definitely makes you feel like you're in the old visitor center. Just absolutely amazing. All right, we're going over to Gentle Giants now. And look at this. I don't know if you can hear, but he's like breathing in and out occasionally. And they even have like a fake feeding station here for him. You can't actually move this, but it's kind of cool and fun. They have a fake dino chow store here. As well as some dessert shops, the treat outpost, where you can get some yummy treats. This is some of the stuff that they have here. Jurassic World, would be Pie, Velocicoaster, S'more. Ooh, check out this Jurassic World dig in a jar. It's got little bones in there. Very cool. Pistachio puff, that looks good. 
and you can even see the stegosaurus from the side. Look at that. They have some like fossilized amber that you can get. I think it's some sort of like gummy or something. It looks like, you know, squishy maybe. I don't know. And then they have some more shirts and merchandise over here. Just in case that's your thing. Even have an egg nursery. So the egg nursery is actually a chocolate egg. Look at this. I'll leave in the hallway now. Oh, uh, look at the statue that they got. John Hammond. I think that's his name at least. So, yeah, screen use John Hammond statue. There's a little amber there, it's slightly glowing. Hmm. Hey Donkey, TikTok wants to know what's your favorite snack? Waffles. And what do you think of Fiona? What do you think of Fiona? No, I heard you. I was just trying to think of a digni dignified way to answer that. <laughs> no, I love the Princess Fiona, but I'm going to be honest with you, she made me keep her dirty little secret and it gave me an ulcer. <laughs> Aww. And not to mention, she married the first dude that came along after her husband died. Oh! Which was Shrek. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alright, brother. Alright, so we're exiting the park now. It's been a long day. But yeah, I was uh, live streaming live for like two hours on TikTok. So I've been here for a while, even though there's not too much video here on this YouTube video showing that I've been here. But I mean, overall, I'd have to say, you know, I hope everyone was vaccinated here. Because if they were, you know, the park would feel safe. Uh, because right now, hardly anybody was wearing a mask. I'd say 90% of the people were not wearing a mask anywhere. I know the vaccination rate here in Orlando is only like 75% or something like that. So I do think there are some people here who are not vaccinated and are lying about it, who should be wearing masks. But I mean, overall, we're almost to that herd immunity point. I think where things can start getting back to normal, where people don't have to wear a mask anymore. I know up until yesterday, I wasn't, I was wearing a mask basically everywhere. Uh, but Universal, you know, first day of not wearing a mask here, it was weird. It was very weird. Uh, people weren't social distancing anymore, but I guess you don't have to if you're not wearing a mask. I kind of wish they were. I missed that about, uh, you know, past COVID times, you know, the social distancing, but overall, it was, it was kind of a fun day not wearing a mask. I was doing some weird lip stuff, just like, because I'm so used to, you know, wearing a mask and stuff, and my lips feel a little bit chapped, but, uh, you know, keep some chapstick on you if you come to a theme park and you don't want to wear a mask. And we're making our way slowly out of the park now, going through City Walk in a second. By the way, as far as I know, the park did not reach capacity today, even though it is Memorial Day weekend. So my guess is that they increased capacity of the park. Uh, I don't know what the capacity is at the moment, but my guess is it's probably like 60 or 70%, maybe even higher, like 80%. Or it could be back 100% to, you know, just let as many people in as possible. I don't know, but I feel like they have been increasing it. As we head out, let's check out the Universal Studios store. This is the newest store that they have here, showcasing some of their amazing merchandise. I really like the style of jacket. The problem is, it's just too hot in Florida where you don't really ever need a jacket or else I'd get a slither in one of this. But just look at this. It's a very clean building, you know, clean lines. Looks pretty nice. They got a whole bunch of merchandise. Some of this merchandise is not in the parks. Like all these plates and stuff, definitely not in the parks. And they also have their whole wand section back here. The wand section is absolutely huge. A ton of wands to choose from. They got these revolving displays where you can actually, you know, turn it around and choose which wand is right for you. And then you can go ahead and pick out your wand from this huge display case. And then, you know, on the sides they have more merchandise on the left and right. 
And you know, this is the other part of the store. I mean, like a third of the store is literally dedicated to Harry Potter. And then the rest is dedicated to their other IP. You know, it's a very clean looking store. Very modern looking. And they also have a Simpson section over here and a Jimmy Kimmel section. Or no, it's Jimmy Fallon. I always get them confused. Spickable Me section with minions. And then just some of their other IP, like Marvel, Jurassic Park, some more shirts in the background there. So I mean, they just have a lot of merchandise at this store. And I like it, I like a lot of it, especially the Velocicoaster merch. Heading out of the store now, checking out the rest of City Walk. It's pretty dang busy. Not as busy as it was this morning, but pretty busy. Definitely seems like a lot more people are coming into the parks and leaving the parks at the moment. So, uh, it should be getting busier in the day. Doesn't seem like they have a large line to get into the parking structure, so that's good. Other times I've seen it backed up so far. Alright, so that's it for me for today. I'm here at the parking structure. Um, you know, overall, I enjoyed today. It's kind of fun getting back to the park without a mask. I wish everyone, you know, did it correctly and they were vaccinated, but I can't control that. All I can control is that I had a fun time and I look forward to doing this in the future. And I hope that Disney maybe does something in the future like this as well, where maybe in a few weeks from now, when more of the population is vaccinated, that they open up the doors where you don't have to wear a mask either. Uh, until next time, see ya.